Hello and welcome. This is HS John teaching another Hand Droid Studio tutorial. Again, back with our Musical Buttons 1 project. And uh, let's go through this. All right. Now, if you look at their former tutorials, we talked about all these other files and um, XML and Java files that are in here. And uh, already published the actual main activity.java. If you'll go back to the previous lesson, uh, it'll be in Music Buttons uh, 1 Part 2, um, either within the uh, web page or on the PDF file. Anyway, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create all the variables. And I'm going to delete these. I had initially created more um, variables than I was going to use up here. And I'll show you why eventually. And actually, this is not being used. All right, now specifically in part two, I created a string shape choice, an instrument choice, and a shared preferences for prefs, and toolbar, M toolbar, and I'll show you those. Uh, the M toolbar is here, when uh, the use of adding the toolbar. And all right, so we got our very beginning where we set content view. I add the toolbar here with M toolbar equals toolbar find view by toolbar, which refers to the toolbar. Um, add listening buttons, one, two, and three. And then this right here, refresher. And this refresher is actually here for me to remember something. So I'm actually, I don't actually need it here. Although I believe I left it actually in the code that uh, I uh, passed out. So you can get rid of that if you want to. It's not really going to do anything. Um, bad if you leave it there but that leads me down to the very bottom and I want to talk about this next to refresher now what refresher does is this is the method I created to handle uh, getting the variables and assigning them um, based upon uh, whether or not I wanted the uh, the buttons to be round square or star shaped and this is how you do that now the prefs equals preference manager dot get default shared preferences this shape choice equals prefs dot get string shape type comma one now what this is is this getting out of of that generic uh, save file that we had created using the uh, the key here way back here in prefs heading header this key and this key is what we're going to be using here, shape type. And I set the default for one. Uh, so there we go. And then it goes through a switch. And I initially tried to use a um, if else um, statement. And I discovered quickly why people use switch statements. Um, because uh, I've always seen people use uh, switch statements quite a bit almost exclusively uh, when working with app programs and that's because you need to uh, ESL statements are finicky and very difficult to work with and to be honest um, just work with switch statements it's a lot easier and you'll have a lot less problems so that's my advice to you so there's my switch case one uh, that means if it passes in a one you're gonna get the round buttons and I assign those here. If it's case two, I remember it's passing from the array, a one, two, or a three, and then a three. So I've got my three choices and uh, it passes these different things. And then it's set, I'm an image, set image, button big, image two, set image resource, button medium, Image three, set image source. So it does that. So back up to here. All right, so I'll call toolbar. Yes, that's where we were. All right, and then part two begins. Uh, this is our on create option, and we've already talked about this. This uh, inflates the toolbar and the settings, uh, little settings overflow menu at the top of the toolbar and when you press the word settings or the action settings which is the word settings on the toolbar or the little overflow window uh, it it does this intent 
it starts th that activity, which is our settings activity. And then it will return true. And we have the overflow. And then um, this right here, protected void on resume. When I have, uh, when I was developing this, one of the problems I had was I would do all this stuff and then have it called and I was having it call the refresher and the musical in different places and it the app does not refresh itself automatically so what happens is even though it would change the the number from one two or three and you could use a um, toast to confirm that they indeed the number was three it would still appear as a one, which means there would be circles instead of stars because it wasn't refreshing the graphics. Um, so in order to make it do that, every time you make a different options choice, I had to put this protect void on resume in here and that fixes it. And now that's for the refresher. The musical is a little bit different, uh, but the musical also works um, here, but there's some different mechanical here. Just put the musical the refresher in here. And what you should do is later is, is play around by taking these out and putting them in in different places and then see the results so that you'll learn what does and does not work and how the order of precedence occurs. Uh, that is a very useful tool. Um, and I learned a lot about uh, creating this particular app by playing with that aspect myself. All right, and then you have your listeners, your button one uh, for the top one, two, and three. And they're pretty much all the same thing. You've got your image button, which we assign to an image view, which is a... And then your image one, find by view, image view. We've already talked about that previously. And then you call your music call. Attach sound to sound large, sound big assigned above all right now that these are notes that are applying to this method right here again we're getting the, the information out of storage and assigning it to this variable and then taking that variable and doing a switch case and it depends on whether or not they chose piano or clarinet as to which gets assigned what and that gets assigned to this variable and that variable gets played down here image button large public boolean on touch sound large start so that right there comes from this method here and again it does that in all three of the buttons and that is pretty much the extent of what happens and why uh, here in this in this method in these methods um, I believe I already talked about the handler I'll just mention it casually again one of the things I did was I use this handler here um, because it's much easier to make rollover and emphasis buttons using the XML um, but in this particular instance, I didn't really care about the emphasis and I just wanted to change the appearance of button a little bit when it was pressed. But in order to do that, if I did it in the XML, it was going to be very problematic when I changed the graphics from uh, star, circle, or uh, square. So what I did instead is I worked with the image one set image resource big button and what image one and big button is doing is this was working with the uh, the actual um, let me show you up here at the top image view not the image itself so I was using that image view and I was cramming a, a different picture in it and uh, right here this is what that does is it when you click it it sets the image to button two which is the lighter of the of the two buttons so it looks like you pressed it 
and then it runs this which halts for two tenths of a second approximately and then loads back into the image view the big button which is of course set up by that variable and then you have that appearance of a button that's being pressed because of this pause right here so there that's why that is so um, I hope this has been helpful um, a couple of workarounds uh, a couple of issues that came up and again these toasts you can work with these toasts put toasts in places and see how things work uh, I use that extensively and I'll, I left those in the code so that you could uh, use those this is Ace John this has been me teaching another Android Studio tutorial. I hope you've learned something and are able to walk away with a little extra knowledge about how to write apps. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up and to subscribe and I'll see you around.